Hi, it's DeWire. It's Tuesday, August the 3rd, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk some more about the heavyweight division. Let's talk about some of your comments to an earlier video. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I have to tell you, for the life of me, I don't understand why my belief that the Usyk-Joshua fight is going to be highly competitive is that controversial. Also, I don't understand how I'm dissing Anthony Joshua, how I'm diminishing him in any way, shape, or form when part of the hedge is AJ by stoppage, right? Understand, I want you to read your own comments. I've posted some of them on the community page here on YouTube. Those of you who believe AJ wins, believes he does so by stoppage, right? The idea is that Usyk is out of division. He's a cruiserweight fighting at heavyweight. We'll overlook the fact that somehow Evander Holyfield was able to make that transition and to actually be, according to Lennox Lewis, the toughest man he ever fought. Right? Let's remember, Lewis fights Holyfield twice, never stops him. Right? First fight, I thought it was curious, ruled a draw. Well, understand now in 2021, because we're in the Valley of the Giants, because the heavyweights themselves have gotten big, right, six and a half feet, etc., people just can't envision a cruiserweight giving a heavyweight a real fight. Well, let me just point out that Maris Breedis stopped Manuel Char. KO. Folks, Please Google that fight. Not close. Apparently, speed, agility, uh, ring generalship has something to do with winning boxing matches. Apparently, it's not all a size thing. Let's remember, right? The great Joe Lewis gets beaten badly, outscored badly by Ezra Charles. Contrast Primo Carnera's huge size with the fighters today. Understand, Primo was not an elite heavyweight. There's more to boxing than size. But more importantly, am I not giving AJ his props by having a hedge of AJ by stoppage? Folks, no one has stopped Usyk. Here I'm conceding that AJ has a great left hook, that AJ is a blessed puncher with both hands, that AJ has a very straight right hand, that AJ might be able to hurt Usyk. Well, that's not enough here. There seems to be a crowd out there that wants to mention A.J. with the Jack Johnsons, the Joe Lewises, right? And when they do, they don't seem to realize that Lewis had a problem with smaller, agile men, right? Folks, Billy Kahn has his fight against Joe Lewis won. The press certainly thought so. It's only because Billy Kahn was a warrior. Billy Kahn was kind of like Josh Taylor, right? It's not enough to win. Billy Kahn just had to go in the pocket and try to close the show. Why Joe Lewis was able to survive that fight. Right, folks, great big man can have a problem with speed, agility, and movement. So, 
Let's just talk about heavyweight. Let's just talk about perceptions. My earlier video talked about Rummy's Corner, an excellent site here on YouTube. Highly recommend it. And Rummy talked about how Usyk was AJ's toughest, most skilled opponent since Vladimir Klitschko. Now, boxing's an expectation game. Right? We know Klitschko was out the ring for more than a year before that AJ fight. But why don't we think about the guy who beat Klitschko for a moment? In a fight where it's almost a shutout. I know the judges saw it differently. Let's face it, the only round that Klitschko really wins against Tyson Fury is the last round. Right? And there again, I have no idea why a fighter who is on the verge of winning the heavyweight title, is hanging around close enough to get hurt by Vladimir Klitschko, a puncher, a known puncher. But just understand, you have a guy in this era, a contemporary of AJ's, who had the belt for five years. Five years and who came within one second, one second of beating Tyson Fury, who beat the man we're all here, saying was AJ's most skilled opponent. Right, think about that. Right, both AJ and Deontay Wilder fought Dominique Brazil. Folks, the Wilder fight's iconic. Brazil, or Brazil, doesn't make it out of the first round. Understand, Wilder puts together some very dramatic KOs. The man he beat to get the title, Bermaine Stavern, has a rematch with him. That rematch doesn't make it out of the first round. Right? He fights Luis Ortiz twice. I'm just telling you, looking on film, Ortiz is one of the craftiest men in the division. Wilder seemed to be in trouble, in my opinion, during the first fight. He leaves no doubt. He stops Luis Ortiz. In the second fight, if it's possible, he's even in trouble on the judges' scorecards. The judges have him in trouble in the second fight. He stops Luis Ortiz. Now, why are none of you talking about Wilder as an all-time great, as a fighter who's really going to impress me and leave a mark, as someone who's special. I can tell you, I was here online and I said, look, a five-year run as heavyweight champion with a high KO percentage, highlight real KOs, is enough to get you in the Hall of Fame. And many of you came back and said, no, 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 you've got to be kidding. Wilder hasn't done enough. Wilder hasn't fought enough people. Folks, AJ got his belt by beating Charles Martin. Charles Martin. So, let me say this, and again, it's an expectation game. We're here talking about, you know, AJ fighting Usyk, a guy who's never been stopped. And it's crazy. People just cannot envision, even with the history of boxing, right? Even with Ezra Charles beating Joe Lewis, another smaller man, 
Rocky Marciano, knocks Joe Lewis out of the ring. Even with the history of boxing, having some hellacious punchers, some excellent fighters at heavyweight, get outmaneuvered by smaller men. Right, not that long after Roy Jones goes up to heavyweight and beats John Ruiz, who, ironically, had beaten Evander Holyfield. Right, people are forgetting all of that. AJ by stoppage over an elusive, unbeaten, very skilled opponent who spars with heavyweights, who's beaten Joe Joyce. Right, if I ask you to name me the top heavyweights in the UK. I'm guessing the Joshua fans would name Joshua, Tyson Fury, and then Joe Joyce. Didn't Joe beat Daniel Dubois? Well, guess what? Joe lost a semi-professional fight to Usyk, who was too fluid and who was too fast. Now, let's remember both Joe Joyce and AJ, who people feel is special here, right? There's no analogy to it. He's special. They both fought a guy named Carlos Taco. Folks, Joe Joyce ends Tackham earlier than Anthony Joshua does. Well, let's revisit. Tackham against Anthony Joshua, right? I think we can all agree that Tackham doesn't move as well as Usyk. Doesn't have Usyk's defense. Now here on YouTube, somehow it's controversial to point out that this is a hard fight, that Usyk, if it goes a distance, might win on the scorecards that Usyk has a chance at a stoppage, right? That's really sacrilege here. Well, just understand, I know you're certain, many of you, that AJ wins this fight by stoppage, apparently on the strength of his performance against Kubrat Pulev, right? But just understand, Takum makes it into the 10th round. Takum, who's not defensively blessed, makes it into the 10th round against AJ. Right? Understand, too, Andy Ruiz makes it into the 12th round against AJ. Doesn't the first fight because Andy wins that fight by stoppage. Let's talk about that. You know, I know the AJ crowd thinks AJ is special compared to Deontay Wilder. Please. Look at the odds for the Wilder Tyson Fury fight that Wilder lost. That's Wilder's only loss officially. Look at those odds. Folks, those odds are much shorter. That's a much more competitive fight from a gambling perspective than AJ against Andy Ruiz. Isn't the AJ loss to Andy Ruiz more devastating than Deontay Wilder's loss to a guy who beat the best opponent that AJ ever faced? Right now, let me say this, and I, I just want to be as clear as possible here. If AJ ever signed to fight Deontay Wilder, and sadly I have to say if, right? Because it hasn't happened. But if the two men ever signed to fight, I'd take AJ in that fight, right? I myself believe AJ is a little bit better than Deontay Wilder, but understand, you know, we can talk about Wilder. And if Wilder were fighting Usyk, if I said, yeah, you know, I. I like Usyk to pull the upset, but I'm going to hedge to play with Wilder by KO. No one here would blink an eye. 
No one here would feel that I'm disrespecting Deontay Wilder. I don't, I don't understand why people here think that I'm disrespecting Anthony Joshua. Tell me about it in the comment section. Right? Folks, for the Usyk fight, understand the bet I'm proposing. I do think Usyk wins the fight. I do think that there's a distinct possibility that Usyk wins the fight by KO. Because understand, if you're fighting Anthony Joshua, you're at risk of being stopped. So if you have an advantage, if you realize that you could outbox him, if you get him on his back foot and you have an opportunity to close the show, you have to take it. Because you don't want this sleeping bear waking up later in the fight, right? And landing that one punch that takes you out. So as I've said here, I think if a boxing match breaks out, this is Usyk's fight to lose. He wins the fight comfortably. I don't think AJ can box with him. Right? The fight for me literally comes down to can AJ land against him? So, for those of you who are confusing, and I mean this, confusing AJ with someone like Sonny Liston, where guys weren't making the later rounds, right? Look at AJ's record. Vladimir Klitschko makes it to the later rounds. Taco makes it to the later rounds. Parker goes the distance. Andy Ruiz makes it to the later rounds. Right? Folks, I have no reason to believe that someone with Usyk's defensive skills isn't going to be able to make it to the later rounds. Also, some of you have pointed out that this isn't the cruiserweight division and Usyk with extra weight, right? With extra weight is going to be slower and more catchable, right? Well, folks, understand there, is, there are a lot of boxers in boxing history, including Roy Jones, who did not gain a lot of weight to challenge for the heavyweight title. Right? I hope Usyk comes in lighter. I hope he makes his speed an issue. Right? Again, there's more to boxing than size. Right? Speed, combinations, agility. I hope Usyk makes all of that an issue. Right? All of it. Also, some of you have said, hey, I hope he fights like Lomachenko. Folks, Lomachenko's father is training Usyk for this fight. That should be a tip-off. Right? So don't get me wrong. I, you know, I look at Anthony Joshua and I see a skilled guy who has been in numerous title fights. But let's be clear here. Joshua only has 25 fights of experience. Not that Usyk has that many either. But when I read the comments to the Joshua videos, I understand his fans are passionate. But I'm wondering, gee, who are the fans talking about here? Are they talking about Joe Lewis? Or are they talking about Anthony Joshua? Right? Some of you, too, have made the argument that Joshua is a combination puncher. Folks, you've got to be kidding me. Joshua is more of a one-two guy. A combination puncher is someone like an Andy Ruiz who lets his hands go. And you're seeing five, seven punches in a combination. Right? Joshua is a heavy-handed guy who does a one-two and then you're badly hurt. If you're reeling around the ring, then Joshua will come out of his shell, step up, 
try to get you up against the ropes, and then throw some heavy artillery. Folks, that's a far cry from, let's say, a Ray Leonard or a Manny Pacquiao, right? Other combination punchers. Understand, too, combination punchers tend to be daredevils. I want you to look at your typical Joshua fight. Joshua can have a hand speed advantage on an opponent. He can have, he almost always has, a power advantage on an opponent. Right? This is not the guy who goes hunting early in a fight against an opponent, even one who he feels he has outgunned. Right? So, look, I don't think I'm dissing Joshua. I don't think I'm underestimating Joshua. Folks, I have a hedge of Joshua by KO. What I'm saying here, and it's really an indictment not of Joshua, but of this era of heavyweights, is that movement has been missing from the heavyweight division outside of Tyson Fury for quite some time. Right? Most of the fighters have been flat-footed. They're not moving around the ring. Again, Joshua wins the title from Charles Martin. Right? In this kind of era, we just assume that heavy punchers Big punchers, large punchers, are going to have their way. Right? We've just forgotten that there were fights where Larry Holmes gets dropped by Ernie Shavers. Look up that fight. I believe it's their second fight. Gets off the canvas, is barely conscious against one of the most murderous punchers I've ever seen. And then Larry Holmes gets on the balls of his feet, semi-conscious. Semi Larry Holmes then starts dancing behind the jab. Well, folks, you have the cruiserweight division invading the heavyweight division. Usyk is going to move the most of any opponent, in my opinion, Anthony Joshua has had while he's in the public light. Right? In fact, let me take that away. Povetkin comes in and actually starts moving against Anthony Joshua. You know, I feel the scoring in that fight was an absolute farce. You know, I feel that Povetkin was off to a fast start. Now understand, there's a difference between Povetkin and Usyk. Right? Povetkin is an ambush fighter, so he's in... Then he jumps back out. He's in, then he jumps back out. He's periodic. Right? He's episodic. I believe the secret to this fight is that Usyk is going to force Joshua to work. Right, folks? When I talk about Usyk being on Joshua's right side, excuse me, his left side, right? And coming in and you know, jabbing him and moving and circling. That's exactly what he did against Murat Gassiev. Understand, Gassiev is front foot heavy. There are rounds in the Gassiev fight where Gassiev cannot even start to walk down Usyk because Usyk is too animated. He's moving too much, too much lateral movement. I think Usyk is going to start crashing the pocket on the left side. He's going to cause Joshua to lift his feet. He's going to create a moving pocket. And he's going to keep Joshua busy. Joshua won't have the opportunity to time a counter as Usyk jumps in the pocket. Also, some of you have pointed out that Usyk's a slow starter. So too is Anthony Joshua. Right? Some have pointed out that Tony Bellew 
wins the early rounds against Usyk. I would argue that Bell is a faster starter than AJ. Right? But what I want people to do is to remember that Bellew fight. Right? Which was in Tony's backyard. Once Usyk figured out the angles, and understand, you can't fight Usyk the way AJ fought Ruiz in the rematch, because Usyk has the legs. Right? AJ can't decide he's going to be outside galloping around the ring. Because Usyk will be able to keep up with him. Right? Once Usyk figures out the angles, either AJ is going to be able to make adjustments or he's not. I think AJ is going to be a dangerous puncher in this fight. You need the AJ by KO Hedge. But I expect the boxing match to break out. And I expect AJ to get methodically outboxed, right? It's really an interesting moment in history that Deontay Wilder and AJ were able to hold on to heavyweight belts as long as they did without facing movement, right? In an earlier generation, folks, there were too many movers. These days, they're too many flat-footed, heavy-punching guys, right? Boxing evolves. The history of boxing has different kinds of champions. I'm just telling you, I don't think, given his last few fights, right? Think about AJ's last three fights. Pulev, Andy Ruiz, Andy Ruiz, right? Off his last three fights, I don't think AJ is going to know what to do with Usyk's fluidity, his movement. He might look as lost as Sonny Liston did against Ali, right? So yes, I do expect Usyk, the underdog, greater than two to one underdog, to win the fight outright. But that's too perilous, so I'm hedging the play with AJ by stoppage. Right? My point to you is understand the risk involved. If this fight goes the distance, like AJ's fight did against Ruiz in the rematch, like AJ's fight did against Joseph Parker, for example, if this fight goes the distance, and AJ wins the decision, you lose it all. What I also want people to do is revisit the end of the Carlos Tackham fight. Right, let's just say that Carlos Tackham to this day firmly believes that he could have continued in that fight. Right, if I'm Carlos Tackham, I'm wondering about the refereeing in both the fight against AJ and the recent stoppage to Joe Joyce, right? It, you know, you know who understands George Groves off that first Carl Frotch fight, right? In the UK, you almost can't get stunned in the ring, right? You have to look alert at all times. You know, if you're fighting a puncher and you get a little bit dazed, they're going to wave it off, right? Even when the guy looks like he's punched himself out, which is how Joe Joyce looked. But just understand, right, Tackham, who's not great defensively, makes it to the 10th round against AJ and looked like he could have continued. Right? How's that possible? When you are so certain here, as a crowd, that AJ can beat Usyk by stoppage. Right? Is a KO inevitable? Or are we in that gray zone where you're looking at the fight and this increasingly starts to look like Mike Tyson against Evander Holyfield? Right? The first fight. Not the air biting fight, but the first fight. Where Evander, you know, Tyson has this big image. We always convince ourselves 
that certain heavyweights are invincible. Then, of course, you notice he's being methodically outboxed. Then the dam breaks, and Evander Holifield is there working Mike over. Are you sure that doesn't happen by rounds 8, 9, and 10? Anyway, that's how I see it. If you believe that AJ is vastly better than Deontay Wilder, understand, Wilder had the longer continuous reign. Understand, Tyson Fury admits that he lost consciousness on the canvas when he was knocked down the second time by Deontay Wilder, right? Fury literally regains consciousness during the count and then gets up at the count of nine. What I want people to do is to go back in history, look at the end of one of the most famous fights in heavyweight history. Folks, George Foreman gets off the canvas against Ali in the Rumble in the Jungle. In my opinion, faster than Tyson Fury gets off the canvas against Deontay Wilder. Foreman lost his title. Ali did not give him a rematch. Understand, that's how close Tyson Fury, who officially has not lost, I know the John McDermott crowd's out there, but look, he officially has not lost, and he came that close to losing to Deontay Wilder. But yet, you don't place Wilder on the same pedestal that you place Anthony Joshua, who beat a former, not current, a former heavyweight champ who had already been nearly shut out, in my opinion, at least on my scorecard, by Tyson Fury, and who had been out of the ring for over a year, right? You lionize Anthony Joshua even after he gets destroyed by Andy Ruiz, right? Folks, he's in with a great fighter, right? Don't be surprised if he either loses by several rounds on, we'll put it this way, on two of the judges' scorecards, because we know there's always that loon judge. But also don't be surprised if Usyk, who stopped Tony Bellew, right? Don't be surprised if Usyk closes the show here. Anyway, that's how I see it. Of course, I'm hedging with AJ by KO. I understand to many of you, that's not enough. Somehow I'm unconvinced about the guy. Somehow I should be considering the guy to be Lennox Lewis, Prime Tyson, right? Uh, Prime Liston, who destroys Patterson twice, right? Prime Lewis. Come on, guys. Come on. 